Hello again and welcome. What you can see here is some of the components out on the meters that I've damaged over the years. Now these particular parts here are all good. You can see this one has a PTC. There's our surge rated resistor and a couple of MOVs in series. This one here I have a much larger PTC. Another surge rated resistor and a single MOV. Typically the surge rated resistor on these meters is a 1k ohm and then the PTC is somewhere around 1 to 1.3k ohms. Typically the MOVs will clamp somewhere over what the meter is rated for. For example, if you have a meter that's rated for 1,000 volts, you don't want the MOVs engaging at 1,000 volts. So it's normally going to be something much higher than what the meter is rated for. Now, early on, a lot of people had commented how I was damaging or stressing these MOVs with all the surge testing that I was doing. Of course, I've explained that I've never seen a MOV actually fail in any of the testing that I've done, not even to the point where I can detect them starting to leak. One of the tests I did with an 87V is I connected it to a high voltage power supply. I think I ran up to like 1.5 kV and I left it there for like a week or something. And during that time I was monitoring the leakage current and we never saw it change. So even with high voltage supply to the meters, it's usually not an issue. Again, the mobs aren't directly connected to the input of the meter. The current is limited by the resistor as well as the PTC. And if we're in one of the modes that it's engaging the high-speed clamp, essentially these mobs are shorted out. Now, in this case, with the smaller PTCs like this, those are a 5 millimeter package. I've seen those actually blow apart. Typically what happens then is once those things are, they're a dead short. Typically on meters that don't have the surge rated resistor, there's nothing to limit the current further. And all that current is passed into the high-speed clamp, and those transistors just fly apart. So on better meters, you always see the surge rated resistor as well as some PTCs, and then you have the MOVs, and then that's followed by the high-speed clamps. So again, in the past, I have tried to damage these MOVs purposely, and I've done it with our transient generator, and even directly having the MOVs attached to this generator, we just don't have enough energy to damage anything. So I hear a lot of people talk about the dangers of the microwave oven transformer. I certainly tend to agree with that. But today we're going to play with something a little different than a MOT. This is a neon sign transformer, so NST instead of a MOT. You can see the secondary on this is rated for 12,000 volts. And has an output current of 30 milliamps. Of course this transformer plugs directly into the line, so its primary is 115 volts. On the far side you can see I have a couple of banana connections. So I can plug my clip leads into there. And there's also the spark gap up on top, and this is just to make sure that the transformer doesn't go open circuit. I've seen videos where people have taken leakage current testers and they've attached those to the inputs of the meter. Unfortunately, the meter, once it breaks down, is a very low impedance, and essentially the output voltage goes to zero. With this transformer, we have a little bit more current that we can apply. So what I'd like to do is attach this thing up to these little circuits, and let's just see what actually gets damaged. So I just attached our circuit with an alligator clip to this electrode. Let's go ahead and I'll turn on the power to the transformer. And let's see what happens here. Let's see, things got obviously pretty hot. Let's see. Oh yeah, that mob is very hot. Surge rated resistor seems fine. Let's just check the values of these. Alright, so you can see I just have the meter in conductance mode. And let's just see if we pick anything up. Yeah, we definitely do. About 0.16 or so. Again, here it is with an open. Let's just try our second mob. You can see it's a little worse at about 0.7 nano semen. Let's just go back to resistance. And let's have a look at our PTC. 
Yeah, about 1.4K, that's about right. And here's our surge rated resistor. And you can see that's still roughly 1K ohm. Unfortunately, I think it just gets so hot. What ends up happening is the solder melts. Let's just try it again. We'll leave the other mob off. Hey, right, here we go. See that mob is heating right up. Let me just zoom in here a little bit for you. See the smoke coming off of that mob? No doubt that's going to be a little on the warm side. <laughs> All right, let's just see if we can measure any resistance with it. 46, 48, 50k ohms. <laughs> Still pretty hot. Let's just check our resistor here real quick. And what do we get? Still about 1k ohm. And our PTC, you can see it's about 2.1k ohm, so both of them have gone up a little bit. Right. What we'll do is just attach the PTC directly to our electrode, maybe. Let's try it again. See that PTC starting to heat up? <laughs> Alright, let's see if anything's changed now. Alright, so this is across our PTC. See the resistance has gone up a little bit. Of course it's hot right now and let's try it across our resistor as well as the PTC you can see about 2.8 let's just try it straight across the resistor yeah, this thing's pretty hot let's see so about 820 ohms here we have our uncovered PTC I don't know what meters these all came out of let's just measure it real quick so again you can see it's about 1.3k ohms or so Again, we'll just connect this directly to the electrode and we'll use a second alligator clip to attach to the other side of it. All right, let's see what happens now. See it's heating up quite a bit, but it's not coming apart. Uh, 
Uh, let's see what we get with it now. Should be plenty hot. Yeah, there you go. 320k ohms. You can see it's cooling down quick. Almost back to normal. Well, that's interesting. So it's actually dipping below. Yeah, I'd say we permanently changed it, so it's now about 440 ohms. It's basically back to room temp. Alright, let's try it again. We'll see if it changes anymore. Man, she's hot. She is hot. Alright. Let's see what we got this time. Fingers are helping to cool it down quite a bit. So we said, what, 440 last time? And we definitely changed it again. About 404 ohms or so. So here I have another one, again, just the 1K surge rate of resistor. This one actually came out of a higher end meter. And you can just see the difference. Should probably measure these real quick before we do anything with them. So again, this should be roughly 1K. You can see it's about 933 ohms. And our PTC, again, about 1.3K. And our MOV should basically be in the open. Again, we can check that in conductance mode. Of course, you'd expect this to basically read zero. Normally, if I'm taking a measurement like this, I set the thing up and I walk away from the setup. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, <laughs> let's go to resistance mode. Yeah, 130K. Let's just check our 1K ohm resistor. Huh? Well, still about 900 ohms. Alright, let's try our large PTC. Again, it dropped a little bit. About 1.1k ohms. Well, I don't think we learned anything from this little experiment. Certainly the mobs can be damaged with high voltage. So can the resistor and so can the PTC. Again, this thing being 30 milliamps at 
12,000 volts. I'm not expecting that's something that anybody's normally going to be hooking their meter up to. But you never know. <laughs> well, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.